Welcome back guys, JC here, and today let's talk about DShot ESCs. People ask me all the time why something isn't working at all or it's acting very strange. Could be something with your flag controller, your ESCs, could be a hardware issue, a software issue, it could be a thousand different things. So I, I try to help you guys out as much as I can, but like I said, it, there's too many things for me to... I can't give everybody an entire list of things to check and go over. So let's just talk about DShot. If you're wanting to use DShot, first make sure your ESCs are BL Heli S ESCs, not BL Heli. There is a huge difference. BL Heli S ESCs, just watch my BL Heli uh, playlist and I show you the difference between BL Heli and BL Heli S. I'll leave the link to that in the description below. Next, if you want to use DShot 600, which kind of is the fastest DShot unless you have KISS ESCs and then you can go up to 1200 but for the majority of us it's going to be 600. If you want DShot 600 make sure you have the BB2 chipset. Whenever you purchase your ESCs it's going to say if it has BB1 or BB2. If you do have BB1 you, you don't, don't run 600. You need to run 300 or lower. Also you need to make sure that you're running the correct gyro and PID loop frequencies. If you don't know how to do that, I will also leave two separate videos for that in the description below. You can watch those and I thoroughly explain how to pick the best uh, gyro and PID loop frequencies for your flag controller and your ESCs. It's two separate things. You also have to take the uh, CPU load into consideration and a bunch of other things. Next, you need to make sure that your flight controller supports DShot right out the box or if you have to do a modification to it to make DShot work. So I'm going to leave this website for you in the description as well. All these flight controllers right here, DShot will work on right out the box. No modification needed. But if you keep scrolling down, it's going to tell you the flight controllers where you do have to do a modification and it tells you what modification you have to make. So we've got the Alien Flight F4, Moto Lab, uh, the Moto F3, Cyclone and Tempest, Pico BLX, SP Racing Evo, SP Racing Mini, Kobini, All-in-One Racer F3, Emacs Femto F3, and maybe the Sparky 2. And you're trying to run D-Shot, but you have not done the modification, well that explains why your multi rotor is acting extremely strange. I will have some videos coming up. Uh, I'll take a couple of these flight controllers and do the modification to it so you can get a uh, pretty good idea of how to do it. So just keep your eyes out for that video. As far as calibration, if you have not watched my video on how to set up DShot ESCs, then watch that. Now, uh, things have changed since then. The Betaflight GUI is a little bit different, but uh, the video is not really out of date. You can still get the idea from watching that video. Also, capacitors. If you have BL Heli S ESCs or you know multi shot and D shot ESCs. Let me back up. Like I explained before, there is no such thing as a as, as only a D shot ESC and only a multi shot ESC. They are both actually the same exact ESC. Just the only difference is hardware wise, D shot ESCs have the signal capacitors removed. I also have a video showing you how to remove the signal capacitor. So if you do have ESCs that you purchased as multi-shot ESCs, you can convert them to quote-unquote D-shot ESCs. It's the same thing. You just have to just watch that video and I'll show you how to locate the capacitor and then remove it. So the point that I'm trying to get to is if you have ESCs with the signal capacitor still on it and you're trying to use D-shot, then that's yet another reason why your ESCs and motors are probably acting very strange. And I show this part in that same video where I show you how to remove the signal capacitors. These are, it's an entire list of ESCs. You can come to this webpage and click on any of these links. And other guys have gone ahead and found the signal capacitor for you. And, you know, they usually circle it or something like that or draw an arrow point to it. So if you have any of these ESCs, you can just come here and you can just see where the signal capacitor is. If your ESC is not on this list, then you can continue watching that same video and I'll show you how to find it using a multimeter and you know some other techniques. 
and that's pretty much going to wrap this one up. Uh, just the biggest thing is, like I, I've been talking to some guys, and a lot of guys don't even realize that there there is a list of flight controllers that needs to be modified before you can use D-Shot. And if you don't feel like doing the modification, but you have ESCs that you purchase as D-Shot, or you have removed the signal capacitor from your multi-shot ESCs, you can go back to multi-shot even without that signal capacitor. It's still going to work perfectly fine. And if you're just completely confused as to anything I just said, then if you're running D-Shot now, go back and you're having problems, then go back to multi-shot and see if those problems still persist. If those problems go away, then it has something to do with D-Shot ESCs. If the problems don't go away, then it's something else you'll have to keep troubleshooting. Uh, but like I said, that does it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.